Calypso, baby! Welcome to the Trish Greener Show. <laughs> and tonight we're going to be talking about. We're talking about how blaming others can keep us stuck in toxic energy. Oh, yeah, you know what oh, they say. You know. First that smelt it, <laughs> may have dealt it. That's right. So, welcome. We are obviously live right now. If you're joining us on our Facebook page, Definitely check those little three dots in the top and click like or notify. Like, so, notify, show first, all those good all things. Those and buttons. if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe. Yes. And if you're just randomly seeing us, reach out, email us, tell us. What do you Touch love? Us. What do you want reach more of? Let's connect. Use the connection tool of the chat. So if you're with us live, help us <laughs> unpack this conversation. Hello, Joe. Hey, First Kobe. Front row in the house. There they are. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we've got all kinds of fun coming your way with this conversation because I think we've all played the blame game. We know the shame that comes with blame. Almost choked on that one. And we know that, what that, it, that hot dog you ate for lunch. <laughs> like I eat hot dogs. <laughs> that vegan hot dog. No. Uh, you know how when you're in the interview, Blame, I was blaming the hot dog. You were blaming the poor little hot dog for my throat. Dog. <laughs> The energy of blame is so constricting and so toxic. I know about it. Maybe you know about it. Yeah. Been there. Really try not to do that. But we're gonna. But it's a uh, habit. It's 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 actually kind of built in. We we've learned to do it since we were a child, right? I remember me and my brother. Mechanism. Who did that? He did. Wasn't me. <laughs> right? Hey, before we start the show. I like to just take a moment and, uh-oh. Oh, are you going to do Oh, the... no, I feel emotional. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. Today it, is Bentley's it. birthday. Oh, Bentley. And Bentley is 12. And I just wanted to sort of, some people talk about their dogs, you know, when they're not around. And I just wanted to say, like, I wanted to just have one moment to share and acknowledge to God, the universe, all that is, and to all of you who also love your beasts and your animals and your pets, what Bentley has meant to my life. I saw a King Charles Cavalier 10 years before I got Bentley, and I saw one. Oh, he's got his eating hat on. I wanted you guys to see the snood. <laughs> this is what a snood is. That's what we put on him when he eats, so his ears don't get in the food. He loves when we put it on and bring him on. On Remember. national television. <laughs> <laughs> so this I saw bad. this creature, and I don't know if it's from a past life, but literally this this little cavalier, her name was Magnolia, and she was the dog of one of my dance students. And it took my breath away. I was just like, oh, what is that magical creature? <laughs> I thought it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. And yes. it was tricolored like Winston, and I thought, wow. Maybe someday I can have a dog because my life was so busy with dancing and competing and all the stuff that we were doing that it, it didn't really fit into our lifestyle. And I thought that would just be the most incredible thing ever. And then 10 years later, we're engaged. Yeah. And all she could think about. And puppy, all puppy, I could puppy, think puppy, about puppy, puppy, was, puppy, puppy, was getting a King Charles. And I actually bought Mr. Bentley. <laughs> Look at him. He's so feisty. He before he was born, before he was born, and that I would get the boy out of the litter, and I and today is his birthday, and we actually <laughs> picked him up on January third. So Tristan had to listen to me from October twenty fourth until January third, obsessed about going to get the puppy. She and he wouldn't stop talking about this puppy. And he has been such a rascal in my life. Uh, he plays jokes on me. He plays hide and go seek. He has the such a sense of humor. He's stubborn. He's funny. Stubborn like his <laughs> papa. He is so stubborn. And he was our ring bearer. And this little guy has brought more joy than I could ever imagine to me. And just really softened any anything that had hard edges. I feel that Mr. Bentley immediately softened. And actually at a point in my life where I was kind of down about some things, he gave me a reason to go for a walk, a reason to get up in the morning, something to be excited about. 
an excuse to serve and not be selfish in my own misery or depression or all those self-absorbing thoughts of being a victim. So I just wanted to celebrate um, 12 years of Mr. Bentley for a moment with you. So thank you for that. Yeah. Bentley, thank you for coming on national TV today. <laughs> so that's actually a beautiful segue because 12 years ago, we were both going through some stuff. And I remember Sabrina that, that, I mean, I've had a lot of depression in my life with pain in my back. You were going through some things. And as mm -hmm. you said, Bentley helped lift your spirits and give you an excuse. Yeah. But there was some blaming and, and blaming can go in two directions. Blaming can go outward towards others yeah, or blaming can go inward towards ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think you probably had a little bit of both going on, yeah. but some personal judgment that takes place when we start blaming ourselves for decisions we made or the way things turned out. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And then of course we can point the finger at you did this and how dare you and all of that. But I've continued to notice, and maybe you've heard the analogy when one finger is pointing, look closely, my friend, there are three more pointing right back at you which puts this conversation into the art of owning your energy, yeah. owning what's showing up in mm -hmm. your life, and using what's showing up to evolve yourself. So let's mm -hmm. dig into this energy of blaming. Yeah. So for me, that I would say the core of blaming, the reason that I so try to catch it, and it can be in the smallest of ways, is without realizing it, in the moment that I blame a person or a situation, or even myself, as far as being a martyr, I have completely given away my power, right. which is never, you never want to do that. You never want to give away your power. That's all that you have is who you are, your right to choose, your right to learn and move forward from there. I'm going to drink to that. <laughs> well, you do. You give your power away. That's for sure. I spent some decent amount of time in a blaming cycle when someone in business took some actions that I felt were oh, yeah. unfair. And so I got- And they were, they were they very were unfair. They were wrong actions, They were, right? they were out of integrity. They were, they were, um, they felt like betrayal and all of that that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. But when you start looping in the energy of blaming, like you said, you're giving away yeah. your power. You're saying to that person, you have control over my emotions or your actions are affecting how I'm going to live my life moving forward. Yeah. And so all these thoughts start to beat us down and sap and suck the life force and becomes very toxic. Mm -hmm. So there's such a power in being able to take ownership of the emotion. It doesn't mean that the person's actions were integrity based right. or in alignment with what you would like. Mm -hmm. But if we can own somehow the co-creative experience and there's something in this yes. for me, then I can get empowered. Yeah, and that's so, to me, like the most beautiful thing in my life experience is that I'm responsible for absolutely everything. Right. I'm totally responsible for how I react and how I shift, how I reframe, how I love, how I'm grateful, how I judge or don't judge. I get to be 100% responsible for that in the smallest of ways because if we really stop and think about it, how silly is it? How absolutely silly is it to say that you made me feel X, Y, Z? We better dig into right? this. You this made, is a big one. You made me feel frustrated. You made me feel stupid. You made me feel on the spot. You made me feel not enough. You made me... How can that be? How can that be? Except if I, ha if I already felt that way and somebody went, Hmm, Sabrina, do you feel like that? And it's like, yes, and you saw it. And then I'm going to blame that person for seeing what was already there. Yeah, it is a tricky one because the reactivity, even on a phys physical and psychological level, you did this to me. Like when it's coming from the outside at us, yeah. the projection, the person doing the thing, and then we're in this energy of how dare you? You didn't respect me. I don't know what you do. Yeah. That would be like my MO. Who do you think you are? I'm bringing you down, <laughs> right? My yeah. warrior in me, which is a war, not a warrior of love, but a warrior, warrior of anger. And uh, yeah. like, what's that energy when you want to get somebody back? Retaliation. Yeah, revenge. Uh, revenge, thank you. That energy is toxic. Yep. 
it will have you seen when someone has that revenge energy they will go to any length to try to justify a new outcome it's just, and they'll kill themselves in the process it's almost just like an exaggerating exaggerated um illustration of needing to be right right I, I, we've talked about this it's really funny to me i've i've I may not be 100%, but I'm really okay with, um, let's say we both look at these glasses and I can say they're blue and you can say they're orange. And I'm totally okay with that. I'm gonna say, I like them, they look blue to me, and you can say, I don't like them, they look orange to me. And I can actually be okay with letting the other person finally have their opinion without having to be right or convinced, especially when it becomes so obvious. That's a very elementary uh, example. But when you both are looking at a situation and somebody will go like, well, he did that and he certainly shouldn't have. Who does he think he is? And the other person goes, no, she did that. And they're looking at it from two different windows. And at that point, there's you're never going to be able to convince someone because of the pre-dialogue we all carry to it There's and no in that moment you that. can step into your power of owning your own thoughts and owning your mind and owning your vibration and for me i just want to surrender back to um to love to last day last moment do i care what it's color somebody thinks my glasses are do i care practice. if somebody thinks i was arrogant do i care if somebody thinks i was showing off do I care if somebody thinks I'm not enough? No. Yeah. Let's get back to attacking. <laughs> because that would be, we all have different windows or lenses that we look through. So Rita, I understand the way Sabrina looks through it and the wisdom that then comes, that's birthed from the challenge, from the contrast. Isn't it so beautiful that when we're going through something, I like to say growing through something. I love that. When you're growing through something, growing you're upgrading. Through. So you want to invite it, right? That's like step one. You know, it's you want to throw the stone, want to retaliate, want to be defensive, want to protect ourselves. Mm. You know, you're doing this to me. Be understood. I want to be understood. Yeah. Or, or I want to prove that I'm right and you're wrong. Like all of that energy, mm -hmm. that's a looping thing, right? You start looping in that self-righteous, whatever it is. Yeah. But as soon as you're feeding that energy, you're attracting more of it, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I, like the big wake up call in this life is like, stop putting out what you don't want, what you don't like. Your feelings dictate your life yeah. and they dictate what you're attracting your or energy. manifesting, right? Mm -hmm. So then I've got to find, how do I shift the conversation, the story that's going on and I have to ask, so sometimes people will say, yeah, but if they hadn't done that, you wouldn't have used it as a catalyst to grow this other thing. And I'm like, that's true. Doesn't mean they're off the hook though, right? Because yeah. I don't want to let them off the hook. Well, you can you can forgive on a cellular level, Well, that's what. You but that do. doesn't mean, you know, we are certainly not saying, well, just forget that that person kicks you in the shin every time you see them. Well, if they're going to keep yeah. kicking you in the nuts, it's time to learn to block. Shin, I said shin. Well, <laughs> upgraded it <laughs> if they kick you in the you know what you know what's that saying you know <laughs> screw me once shame on you screw me twice shame on me right because like you got to learn from it so hopefully you learn from it and you use it to upgrade yourself yeah. that's what i've had to do is like go oh if i'm a co-creator somehow karmically energetically the law of attraction if you will put this on my plate mm -hmm. for me to upgrade so let me go ahead and own it I think I need some of your water. Hot dog's really good I keep you choking on something. So I'm gonna I'm going to get so empowered by owning this is here for a reason yeah. and I've got something to do with it. Mm -hmm. The next thing. I know that if that person, this is just for me, I know that if that person was out of alignment with their soul, they're gonna have to pay their own piper. Yeah. That's not up to me. It doesn't feel good to anyone. I don't have to go and get them back. Or prove anything because then I'm in that and I'll let the universe and them have that work that deal out mm -hmm. so that's off the plate now now I'm just gonna get super charged and super empowered and every time I do that usually that other energy comes back later and goes wow 
how did you do it? Or I'm so sorry, right? Like, because you chose integrity, yep. you chose to upgrade. So it's very beautiful to own it. Yep. Stop playing the blame game. You're you know, then and, out of the toxic loop. And two things. One is when I'm blaming someone or something, let's say it's a, we were taking, oh, I have a story. The blame game. Yes. Um, but let me finish my thought. <laughs> I say, does it feel good to think what I'm thinking right now? Do I feel good blaming myself or do I feel good blaming the other person? And if the answer is no, then I know I'm out of alignment with the love that I am. I'm out of alignment with source. I'm out of alignment with my highest being. And how can I softly shift those thoughts to be more in alignment? But here's what actually sparked this whole episode is, <laughs> is we were um, we were in Oakland at a mastermind and then we went to um, Los Angeles to have like this housewarming and if if you're in the dojo or the VIP club you've got to listen to last week's call because it's absolutely hilarious that's all I have to say and <laughs> so we were traveling and I carry quite a bit of um, makeup and you can judge me if you want, but I really love it. <laughs> and so we got back and everything, I put things in plastic baggies when we're traveling and I have like this beauty blender sponge and you wet it and you squeeze it. And then when you put your foundation on, you press it into your skin. So it's always a little damp. And I have this CC cream brush that I whip the cream into my face as a sunscreen and it stays a little damp. So that night I had unpacked everything and I was getting ready the next morning and I picked up the CC cream and I put the brush and I'm doing it and I'm like, I noticed, man, that brush did not smell good. Like, oh man, everything got moldy in the suitcase and then in the airplane, maybe it was really hot, maybe it was really cold. So I, I put that brush over on the bathtub, like you gotta deal with that later. So I went and got the beauty blender and I started using the beauty blender to do it and I'm like, Oh, pew, it's rotten too. So I put that aside and then I went to get some powder and I was holding the brush and putting it in the powder and putting the powder on. That brush also smelled. Now it wasn't wet. So I'm like, how did all of my stuff get mildew and mold and so stinky? And then my nose itched. And I scratched it and I had nothing in my hand. And I was like, pew, it was the new hand lotion. <laughs> it was my hand all along. And I was blaming the beauty blender and I was blaming the CC brush and I was blaming the powder brush and I'm going to wash everything. And I'm blaming the airplane and I'm blaming the mildew. And it was my own stinky hands. And I really laughed. Right? Yep. He who smelt it it's probably dealt it. <laughs> And then that reminded us of the same story with the musk deer. Do you guys know that story? That um, one of the deers, uh, they smell this sexy smell. And you're like, mm. Mm, who is, where's the lady making that <laughs> smell? And the deer goes leaping, frolicking. Where is she? Where is she? She smells really good. I got to find her. And it turns out that when that male is ready to... When he's excited. When he's excited and ready to have babies, he makes this smell. And it's his own smell that he's chasing after in order to look for the woman. And I saw, you know, that's a, that was kind of similar, but it was like my hands were really stinky and I was blaming. It's the flip. <laughs> it's the flip side of that. Well, it's, it's sort of like what you were saying earlier when no one can make you feel a certain way, that musk deer creates his own mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. So when we're feeling negative emotion, when we're feeling love, oh, I feel so much love when I'm with you. Everything is us unlocking our own definitions and our own experience and our own energy. So on all counts, it's just kind of good to own whatever you're experiencing. Yeah. Of course, other things trigger it. Mm -hmm. Of course, other things might poke at it, trigger the bear, poke mm -hmm. the bear. But at the end of the day, if you could take full ownership for who you are in your reality, mm -hmm. you would be embracing your mastery. Yep. Right. It's so great when someone is even throwing something at you, meaning 
well, I don't know if it's great, but here's a great or way to handle it. Or you perceive them as. It seems like they're blaming you, right? You did it. If you could not shut down, not like, oh, Zen, I don't feel anything. I don't mean that. But if you could hold your energetic state and be like, hmm, is that so? Yeah. Right? And then look at it consciously, even constructively, and see, is there an upgrade here for me? Meaning, am I out of alignment? Am I causing this reaction? Or is that coming from the, the musk deer himself? Yeah. Right? <laughs> a lot of times it's, well, it's always the other person's reaction. So they've got to deal with that. But if you are triggering other people, it's good to look at it mm -hmm. and take ownership of how am I coming across? Yeah. That's something I continue to want to work on as a teacher and an influencer. You're saying things, you're getting inspired. Things are coming through you. You want to make sure that you know it's coming in a way that yeah. you feel is your truth. It's sometimes from the outside, things don't look the way they feel. So That's right. input is good. Like, We'll, we'll, we will film videos for our pages and things, and we might have a couple of takes. And I've shared this before. When I look at some of the footage, I'm like, man, I'm kind of bossy and snippy because I'm like, come on, Tristan. You meant it. Oh, if you guys I, saw some of the outtakes? And I'm like, I don't <laughs> feel that way when I'm saying it. I feel like I'm really being helpful and coaching and teaching. But I'm, I'm just trying to get it done. But I realize if I don't master. know me and I've watched it, I'm like, she's like not very nice. But you are. You're just a taskmaster. Yeah, I don't. But I don't feel that way even in the moment. So it's, it's, it's and interesting. And that's good, right? And, and sometimes maybe, what if it just is what it is? This last Saturday, I taught a class at 8 a.m. And I didn't know if I was going to teach it or not because of travel. And usually when I teach at this certain location... I let them know and I told them that I was going to cancel. So I get there and my students are there and it's 82 degrees in the room. And mm. we're going to do a cardio class. And they were complaining, but they were, they were blaming the studio owner and go, they must not like us here. They want us out. And I knew that I hadn't let them know in time that I was going to have fault. the class. So, and so I felt, I felt bad that they were, and so I said, hey guys, I, I don't think I let them know in time. And so it's, it's just probably my fault. I, I wish I had known sooner. Now I could say, and I didn't know sooner because enough of you didn't respond to my emails and texts so that I had enough time. So it can just be a, a passing of the buck over and over and over and over and over. But then it can just be what it is. And so I said, we're going to sweat a lot and get rid of all the toxins and it is what it is. Ta -da. There it is. So <laughs> we have a challenge for you. It's a two-part challenge. Yeah. Challenge number one is to catch yourself in the blaming game. Whether you're pointing the finger at others or you're pointing them at yourself and judging yourself, just notice when it's happening because it's probably happening here and there and you're maybe missing it. It's oh, flying right. under the radar of awareness. Yep. Catch yourself because blame becomes complaint and, and all of that. And it's it's not a healthy energy. Yeah. Take ownership for how you're feeling and then turn it around. Use it to empower yourself. So we all know how to reframe. And let it go. You just got to catch it, let it go, let it flow, reframe it. I so, tripped in that pothole. Ah, I tripped okay. in that pothole. Oh, I feel stupid. Let it go. You have this amount of energy. Let's say you have this amount of energy. You can take that same energy and you can use it to beat yourself up or to beat others up, right? Or you can use that energy to upgrade yourself. Wow, I'm going to learn from this. Mm -hmm. So that's challenge number one. And challenge number two. Notice. Challenge notice, is, notice is challenge number one is to notice. And challenge number two, I basically said it. When you see yourself looping in blame, go ahead and reframe it. Yeah, so step one it. is catch it. Step two is reframe it. And you will be blown away at how quickly you start to change the energy of victim, or how dare you, into total empowerment, total upgrade of energy, feeling so good in your skin, a level of self-mastery that we're all worthy yeah. of. So that's the challenge yeah. to, to all of us. And I would say in part two, so let's say that I'm really um, feeling a, a strong emotion because someone said something to me and I don't think it's fair what's been happening. It, it doesn't go with my belief system. I might not be able to jump from there to um, chocolate chip cookies in the trees, 
<laughs> right? So sometimes you just, I have to walk myself through it. It's like if I wake up at night and something's bothering me and I might have to walk through like, well, is, was there intention to hurt me or was there intention something else? I might have to like multiple reframe, like maybe eight thoughts in order to get to a place where I can let go. And that's okay because sometimes when that emotion has a hold on you, it usually means you care a lot. And I always say the worst thing in the world is not to care because when you care and you have a strong emotion, when you can redirect that, you can be the most powerful lover. That's so beautiful. Yeah. I know you sent this to us about Gandhi. I know you yeah. like that. Blaming the wolf would not help the sheep much. The sheep must learn not to fall into the clutches of the wolf. That's what we're just saying. Right? Yeah. There it is. And Do his, you have the... Um, I have Byron Katie's. Yes, that that's really the one. Beautiful. So this is a really beautiful also. Placing the blame or judgment on someone else leaves you powerless to change your experience. Taking responsibility, right? Like we're saying, owning it for your beliefs and judgments gives you the power to change them. Yeah, reclaim that power. Let's not give it away anymore because that's what the game is doing. Such a healthy, beautiful reminder. And it's just an action that's taking place in the mind. It's an activity blame. The energy, the emotion, we control that. Yep. We decide. All right, sweet friends. Thank you for those of you who showed up live. We can't wait to read all of your comments. If you are here live listening in this moment and you uh, intend to come and be with us in Austin, November 16, oh, sorry, yeah, 16 and 17, we have tickets available Today's through time. till midnight tonight. And then the early bird discount ends. So it's till tonight, 50% off. Check it out. SatoriMethod.com forward slash big life. Going to dance it out? Thanks, everybody. Well, I'm not going to stand up because I have pajama bottoms on. <laughs> I'll stand. <laughs> I've got jeans. That's what I love about live cast. You only have to dress from here up. <laughs> you have plenty of good clothing going on down there. <laughs> love you guys. Thank you. See you next time. Oh, it'll be Halloween. We're going to dress up. Ooh. Well, wait till you week. see. What are You're going to see a pirate. What You're going to see steampunk. 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 And boobies. Just what? Saying. Yeah. I'm going to share my boobs? Yeah. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> okay. Bye.